Welcome to State of Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato coming to you from the Agnes Veras studio here at NJTV. Um, we welcome our good friend, Dr. Joe Marbach, president of Georgian Court University. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you, Steve. Good to be here. For those who do not know Georgian Court, describe it. Georgian Court is a school of about 2,000 students. We're co-educational over the last four years. We were founded by the Sisters of Mercy. So this is our 108th year of operation, and we're located in Lakewood, New Jersey, the fastest growing city in New Jersey. Absolutely. By the way, um, Dr. Marbach is also, um, before he became president of Georgian Court, he did a lot of political analysis for us on public broadcasting. We'll do some political stuff as well, big picture. But let's talk about the higher ed picture. Um, the student body that you have, you're very concerned about their ability. Uh, again, I said this before, I'll say it again. For those of you who are dealing with allergies, throat issues, that explains my voice. Uh, my heart goes out to you. So how about this one? The question of student affordability, huge. Mm -hmm. At Georgian Court, you in fact froze tuition for a period of time and then only increased it by 2% recently. How is that done? Well, it's done with a lot of sacrifice and uh, we have to limit any increases because higher education is labor intensive. It's faculty, it's staff. Uh, we're not delivering widgets, we're delivering knowledge. So that's all labor intensive. So we've got to try to keep our cost as limited as possible. Um, sometimes our amenities don't uh, live up to the standards that other schools are, are uh, putting out there. But our student body isn't worried about that. Um, I'll give you some numbers. The graduating class that just walked across the stage a couple weeks ago, 48% were the first in their family to go to college. First. First. 51% of that graduating class were eligible for a Pell Grant. That meant they were coming from lower socioeconomic uh, backgrounds. So we're supporting mm. first generation new students. We're, we're the new Ellis Island. We're the new American dream. So let me ask you something. For many of these students um, for whom it's the first time they've been to college, first in their family, what are many of them facing? Challenges? Uh, it's tremendous challenges. They, they've got family issues back home because they're the first in, in the family. So, do they get the family support that they need? Do they know to apply for all the student aid that they can afford? We have students that won't fill out three questions in a student of, uh, financial aid form, and they're not eligible for the New Jersey Tuition Assistance Grant. And they don't fill it out for fear of? They, they just don't know. So we've got to walk them through the process. And, and we hold a lot of hands, but we're very good at mentoring students. And, and that's what I promise parents as they come into Georgian Court. Your student will find a mentor before he or she leaves. So, you know, you talk about um, aid to students, financial help. You were saying before we got on the air that, look, no matter who the governor is going to be in the state of New Jersey, unless there's some huge pot of money that all of a sudden shows up, there's not going to be more money for the independent or even the public. Even the public, public yeah. uh, colleges and universities. But you did say if the money doesn't go to the institutions, it's critical that students continue to get government support. Be specific. Well, the state has defunded operations at public and private schools as well. Um, but they have continued to increase the amount of tuition aid grants tag, tag grants, tag grants that they give to students. And that allows students to choose the type of institution that fits them best. So there's a tag grant award for community colleges. There's one for the public colleges. There's one for Rutgers. There's one for private institutions. And they have different levels of funding. But it enables or allows students to afford to choose the type of education that fits them best. Mm. So if you want small classrooms, teacher ratio 13 to 1, the Georgian court setting, we might be the one that would appeal to you. If you like the bigger class, you don't mind being one of 200 in a big lecture hall at mm. Rutgers, you can have that option as well. Joe, so, do you think the state government, federal government, government overall, policymakers, should have a higher ed agenda policy that's strategic? Or do you pretty much say, listen, we're on our own. We have to figure out how to get it done, each institution. Well, I think one of the things that we've talked about in the independent sector is trying to... By the way, to describe the independent sector. The independent sector are the uh, nonprofit universities operating in New Jersey. Nonprofit. Nonprofit. So there are 14 of us uh, that operate in New Jersey. So in a sense, New Jersey is underserved uh, from the independent sector, the nonprofit sector. I came from the Philadelphia market. There were... 11 Catholic universities just in the Philadelphia market. That's right. Here in New Jersey, there's only six Catholic universities. So it's a, it's a, the state is underserved, and sometimes we wonder why are we losing so many students to Pennsylvania, New York, Maryland, Virginia. Mm -hmm. We don't offer them all the options that they, they might be able to have. Um, 
Can I do a little political stuff with you? Sure. The tone of political discourse in this country that people worry about on a lot of levels and the role of technology in that is? Well, technology both increases choices to individuals and it also can limit choices. Increasing choices in where do you get your information? Where do you get your news? Today, fewer and fewer people use mainstream media to get their news. In fact, it's suspect. So now if you're uh, liberal, you'll watch MSNBC and those websites and beyond. If you're conservative, it's Fox and it's, you know, pick any of those other websites. And so you, get, you don't get to see the other side. So you get to see what reinforces what you think you already Reinforces think? Your, your vision, your prism is What's very limited. What's wrong with that, Joe? Well, it doesn't give you a chance to consider the other side. It doesn't give us a chance to, to meet in the middle. The other side of technology is that we've gotten so good at redistricting that we put all the Republicans in one district, all the Democrats in one district, and we know that who votes in primaries? It's party loyalists. People who are very conservative, mm -hmm. people who are very liberal. What's so wrong with that? We end up with very liberal candidates and very conservative candidates. So what kind of Congress do we get? What kind of legislature you get, you do you we get? Bipolar, uh, 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 you get bipolar. <laughs> you get polarized. Bipolar, yeah. But I don't polarized. know if that's... Listen, I'll stay, we'll, yeah. we'll have a, a, a mental health professional yes, and talk about talk that. that. But you do get this polarized thing that goes on. We're Republican conservatives. You're Democrat liberals. Liberal. And we don't agree on anything. Can't meet in the middle. And so what does that mean in terms of the public's business, public policy, getting things done? Well, and it really leads to this health care consideration that the Senate's doing, and it's in secret. Because United you can't States leak Senate. any. Yeah, you can't leak any information uh, as it goes out. Or you get party-line votes, straight party-line votes. Now, I think we need to reconsider that because New Jersey will have an opportunity to make more competitive districts. You know, when we redistrict a few years ago, we made very... Uh, incumbent friendly districts so we we really polarized our own legislature um, i think we need to look at making com election districts more mm. competitive to get to the middle ground last question at georgian court uh a supporter of public broadcasting um and i've been to your campus and i've sensed when i'm there that there's a, a ability to have an honest dialogue without the vitriol without the anger um, I don't know how much people listen to other people's point of view anywhere. Do you have any reason to be really hopeful that in our nation, our state and our nation, that the tone's going to change? Well, just based on the students that, that we've taught and that I've gotten to know, um, they're new to the system. So there was a lot of concern when Trump was first elected. We had some meetings. We talked to them about how impactful the president can and cannot be because of our systems of checks and balances. And I think... That allayed a lot of their fears, but we've had these open dialogues. And I, I'm very positive. Uh, I got in this business because I'm an optimist, and I think uh, our young people are going to do great things. Dr. Joe Marbach is the president of Georgian Court University, based again? Lakewood, New Jersey. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it, buddy. My pleasure, Steve. State of Affairs, we'll be right back right after this.